Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to English with Shalini. In this video, we are going to read The Little Match Girl. It is a short story by Hans Christian Andersen. It was published in 1845. So, this is a story of Victorian age when Queen Victoria was uh, Queen of England. And this is a story of a little match girl who sells matches. And... Um, her father has ordered her to sell matches, but she was not able to do so. And this story is uh, being um, set in a new year eve, means 31st December, when the whole world is celebrating uh, the arrival of the new year. She is, um, she is shivering in cold and she is dying of hunger. Now, most terribly, now we will start the story. Most terribly cold it was. It snowed and was nearly quite dark. An evening, the last evening of the year. In this cold and darkness, there went along the street a, a poor little girl. Bareheaded, she was bareheaded. She had nothing uh, on her head and with naked feet. When she left home, she had slippers on it. It is sure, it is sure, it is true. But what was the good of that? There were very large slippers which her mother had hitherto worn. So that slippers belonged to her mother. Uh, so large uh, they were. And the poor little thing that uh, lost them as she scuffled away across the street. So when she was running across the street because of the two carriages that rolled by dreadfully fast. So in order to uh, uh, get away from those uh, um, running carriages, she lost her slippers. So, one slipper was nowhere to be found. The other has been laid hold by an urchin. Urchin means a small boy um, who, don't, who doesn't have any home. And uh, off he ran with it, that slippers. He thought it would do capitally for a cradle when he someday or other should have ch children himself. So, that uh, boy has taken uh, her slipper. Uh, so, uh, he thought that maybe there will be some children of me and I will make cradle of that uh, slipper. Now, so, the little maiden uh, walked on with her tiny naked feet that were quite red and blue from cold. She carried a quantity of matches in an old apron and she held a bundle of them in her hand. So she was a match girl. She has come there to sell matches. That was her little business. So nobody had uh, bought anything of her the whole life long days. So whole day past was nobody has bought anything from her. And no one had given her a single farthing. So, uh, she, she didn't have any money. So, she crept along trembling with cold and hunger. A very picture of sorrow. The poor little thing. So, she was very much hungry. She was shivering with cold. And she crept along um, to a side of the building. Now, the flakes of the snow covered her long hair which fell in beautiful curls around her neck. She was very beautiful and the flakes, it was a snowy uh, evening. So, flakes of the snow um, fall down on her curls. You can see in the picture like this. So, bit of that, of course, she never once now thought. So, uh, this was that. And... Uh, but that, of course, she never uh, once th now thought. But she didn't bother about the snow or, or she didn't bother about her look, that how she, beautiful she is, but uh, she is not looking good at this time. So, from all the windows, the cradle were gleaming. The candles were gleaming. It was a New Year Eve, so there was celebration all around and candles were gleaming. It was shining and it smelled so deliciously of roast goose and there was a meat was uh, being uh, roasted um, for, for you. No, it was a new year you. It was a new year you. Yes, of that she thought. Then she thought that it is a celebration all around because it's the occasion of new year you. It was the 31st December. So, in a corner by two houses of which one advanced more than the other. So, there was a corner. She seated herself down and covered herself. 
covered together she covered herself she huddled there in order to um, to fight the cold her little feet you can see in the, in the picture so her little feet she had drawn close up to her uh, but she grew colder and colder and to go home she did not venture she could not go to home she did not dare to go to home for she had not sold any matches and could not bring up farthing of money so uh, nobody has bought any matches from her so didn't have she didn't have money so how can she go to her house from her father uh, her father was very strict and she would suddenly get blows she is going uh, to get he hit by her uh, father and it is uh, at home it was cold too so in her home also there was not any comfort for above her she had only the roof so their home was very in a bad condition dilapidated condition they had only roof through which the wind whistled so through which uh, wind came whistling uh, even um, even though the largest cracks were stopped up with straw and rags so uh, it was a very old building it was very um, dilapidated house so it was uh, um, have it was having cracks and it was stopped by straws and rags all around <clears throat> now her little hands were almost numbed with cold so uh, it was a shivering cold and her, her hands were numb with cold oh a match might afford her a world of comfort so she thought that since she was having matches uh, in large quantity she thought that if we light some matches it will give her comfort but if she only dared take a single one out of the bundle but she was uh, having doubts because she thought that if i will burn this uh, matches what my father will tell me and so much then uh, draw it against the wall then she um, draw Uh, one match and she um, she rubbed it against the against the wall her fingers by it and warm her fingers by it she drew one out so she wanted to warm her fingers so she, uh, so she lighted a match match stick and uh, the sound was rich how it blazed how it lighted how it burnt it was warm bright flame like a candle so it was looking like a candle you can see in the picture and it was a warm bright flame like a candle as she held her hand over it it was a wonderful light it was a very nice light it was very comforting for her so it seemed really to the little maiden as though she were sitting before a large iron stove so now the comfort of the um, uh, match was so that she thought that she is sitting before a iron stove before a, a fireplace with burnished glossy brass so this fire gloss is uh, fire stove is uh, iron stove is uh, decorated with glossy brass feet and a brass ornament at top now the fire burnt with uh, such a blazed influence it warmed so delightfully uh, it was very delightful it was very warming to her but it was in her imagination only she was imagining things out of cold and out of hunger so the girl had already uh, stretched out her feet to warm them too uh, in the warmth of that majestics but the small flame went out it was a very small flame because it was the flame of matchstick only so the stove vanished and as soon as the flame of the matchstick uh, vanished stove also vanished she had only the remains of the burnt out matches in her hand now she has only remains of the matchsticks uh, in her hand vanished means it was not there now she rubbed another against the wall she uh, took the another match stick and it rubbed against the wall it burned brightly again and where the little where the light fell on the wall there the wall became transparent like a veil 
so uh, like a veil like a veil of a bride the wall became transparent out of the light of that majestic and so that she could see into room and through that light she could three, uh, see into that room again she is imagining and on the table was spread a snow white table cloth and what she saw she saw that uh, there is a table and there is a snow white table cloth on that table dining table upon it was a splendid porcelain services uh, splendid porcelain services means there was a um, utensils made up of porcelains and the and the uh, roast goose was steaming famously with its stuffing of apple and stuffing up apple and dried plums so there was a very delicious uh, roasted goose was there and that goose was that uh, goose meat was stuffed with apple and dried plums it was looking very delicious to her and uh, the, and what still more capital to behold was capital miss important what was more important to see was that uh, the goose hopped down from the dish now she is imagining that that goose that dead goose uh, the meat of the dead goose hopping around hopping down from the dish and it reeled about on the floor with a knife and fork in breast so now that uh, roasted meat is coming towards her uh, walking and it's uh, coming with the knife and the forks uh, in her breast so this kind of ima I mean, imagination she is having till it came up to the poor little girl uh, when the match went out and nothing but the thick cold damp wall but soon what happened her match flame uh, exhausted it is extinguished it burned out and there was nothing there was nothing like a uh, goose or anything and uh, what she saw was just a thick cold damp wall which was there and which was in reality and was left behind so she lighted another match now she thought that this match is a magical uh, this match stick light is magical it is uh, giving her uh, in miss unimaginable um, unimaginable happiness so she is lighting one after another now Uh, there she was sitting under the most magnificent christmas tree now what she saw under that light she is sitting under the very magnificent uh, christmas tree in the picture you can see so it was still larger it was very large it was larger than the uh, usual christmas tree and more decorated than the one which she had seen through the glass door in the rich merchant house so um, Uh, she has once seen uh, through the glass door of a merchant house that there was a very good uh, uh, christmas tree and but this tree is larger than that thousands of lights were burning on green branches and uh, you can see in the picture thousands of lamp are burning here is decorated with the um, um decorated with the lights it's a gaily colored picture and there are colorful also colorful things are hung there in the christmas tree such as she had seen in shop windows and this kind of um, picture she has seen in the shop windows uh, looked down upon her the little maiden stretched out her hands towards them now uh, she stretched her hand and she wanted to touch those lights when the match went out but what happened again um, match went out and uh, the light of the christmas tree rose he higher and higher and the now she is imagining that the all the lights from her uh, christmas tree is going higher and higher so those lights are going farther and farther from her she is not able to touch those lights and um, so um she saw them now as the stars in heaven now she is thinking now she is seeing that those lights were not in the christmas tree but they have become stars in heaven one fell down and formed a long trail of fire and out of those stars one star fell down so and uh, when it uh, that when that star fell uh, there was a long trail of fire there was a long uh, row of fire and someone is dead just dead now she is thinking about the parables uh, about the legends that uh, people say that when any star fails there is 
uh, somebody is dead so now is thinking she, she is imagining that there must be somebody who is dead so said the little girl for her old grandmother the only person who had loved her and who was now no more had told her that uh, when a star falls a soul ascends to god so now she is remembering her uh, god her uh, grandmother and according to her grandmother she has learned many stories from her uh, her grandmother says that is when somebody is dead uh, that become stars and that ghost into the heaven and so uh, when any way star falls it means that some soul has ascended to god so it was uh, again a light and its lusher in that lusher there stood the old grandmother now this time again she lighted a uh, majestic and there in that lusher in that uh, brightness there stood her uh, old grandmother uh, who uh, loved her so much and so bright and radiant so mild she was so radiant she was so mild she was so beautiful and with such a expression of love she was full of love for her and uh, grandmother now she is uh, telling addressing grandmother grandmother cried the little one oh take me with you oh take me with you you go away when the match burnt out you will go away uh, when the match uh, will go you vanish like a warm stew like the delicious roast goose and like the magnificent christmas tree so like all these good things uh, vanished away from my life warm stew delicious stew you will go away like that don't go please don't go and she rubbed the whole bundle of match quickly against the wall then she rubbed all the matches quickly so that uh, her grandmother will not go away from there for again she is imagining na this is not uh, happening in actuality for she wanted to be quite sure of keeping her grandmother near her because this time she uh, she did not want to lose her grandmother Uh, she want to uh, be with her always so she was uh, desperately lighting those uh, match sticks now and matches gave such a brilliant light that it was brighter than at noon day it was a very bright uh, bright light it was a brilliant and uh, because it was lot and lot of matches are blowing never formerly had the grandmother been so beautiful and so tall so now she is thinking that my grandmother is uh, okay but she has never seen um, uh, so beautiful as she is um, she is looking uh, today she looked she looks she took the little maiden on her arms G- grandmother took a little maiden in her arms that little girl in her arms and uh, both flew in brightness and in joy so high now grandmother is dead and uh, that grandmother is taking little girl higher in the sky in the heaven so very high and then above was uh, neither cold nor hunger nor anxiety they were with god so now grandmother is taking her away away from from this world from this real world and she is taking her to heaven when there is a no feeling of hunger no feeling of anxiety and frustration and cold nothing is there there is just um, god is there and grandma is there and uh, everything is good but in the corner at the cold hour of dawn so it was the hour of dawn uh, but now this is the picture of reality na this is now um, people are seeing so it is a cold hour of dawn said the poor girl with a rosy cheeks and with a smiling mouth leaning against the wall frozen to death to last evening of the old year now when people came there they saw that a little girl is sitting by a wall and she has frozen to death she has died out of cold and she is leaning against that wall and there is a uh, there is a a tinge of rosiness in her cheeks her cheeks are rosy her mouth is smiling because she is happy and uh, stiff and stark sat the child there with her matches of which one bundle had been burnt and uh, her look is stiff because she is dead now she is a corpse so uh, she is stiff and stark and uh, mm, there are matches all around her and there are some matches which has been burnt and she wanted to warm herself people 
said the people were saying that oh she is dead and uh, uh, looking into the matches so they are saying that she wanted to warm herself but she was not able to do so um, and she died and like that so they are uh, having sympathy on her now no one had the slightest suspicion uh, of what beautiful thing she has seen so she, they are taking sympathy on her they are um, they are thinking that oh she is dead but they are not able to understand and they are not suspicing that uh, how happy she is now no one ever dreamed of the splendor in which uh, with her grandmother she had entered on the joy of new year so they don't know that although she is dead now she has entered to the world of her grandmother world of the heaven uh, she is now with her uh, grandmother and with god and now she is joyful and uh, this that joy is better than joy of this real world so this is a sentimental story very sentimental story so here the little girl struggles to support her family despite her awful circumstances dreaming of food and comfort all the time being kind to others uh, are uh, are less fortunate is one of the moral of this teaching we should be kind uh, to others who has who are less fortunate now now in the title of the story the little girl is never named she is uh, known simply as the little magic girl by presenting her an enormous young waif hans christian andersen makes a symbol for all the abandoned child in the world so that girl is a symbol of the whole um, all children who are abandoned who are deprived who are hungry who are um, shivering in cold and destitutes so this is the story thank you so much for watching